Today we are taking your health back with me, Wendy Lowe. We are coming to you from our studios of Think Tech Hawaii in downtown Honolulu and my home office in Makiki. Today we have Devin Nakasone of Prayers on Wings, POW POW, sharing his heart and his life experience with us. His mission statement is that no child should feel alone. Aloha and welcome, Devin Nakasone. But before we get started, please share a little bit about yourself. Aloha, Wendy. How are you? Uh, of course, you said my name is Devin Nakasone. Thank you for having me. A little about myself. Uh, well, I'm a state worker, maintenance worker by day, uh, entertainer by weekend, and a bunch of other stuff in between. I, I guess we'll have time to talk about it in the next half an hour or so. That's just a little bit about myself. Wow. So that's a pretty balanced life, I would say. I know you do a lot of community service, but you need to get income. So you work for the state and then you do your passion, which is entertain. And we're going to talk all about that. But yes. um, I know you also wrote a book. So you're an author. The book is called Lucky Ducky. So please tell us the story around that title. Lucky Ducky is a children's book. And uh, that children's book is a true story about a little boy uh at the age of 11 being diagnosed with leukemia and the struggles um in in the book i mean there's so many struggles of being a, a patient of of chemotherapy and cancer but the struggle in the book is about not having enough communication and uh that story is about myself being diagnosed at the age of 11 um, all the way back to um should i say it 1984. <laughs> <laughs> right? Hey, what a survivor. That's the way I look at it, Devin. Yes. Yeah. So that, that book um, is, uh, well, was never my plan to be an author, but uh, it is my book. And uh, we use that, uh, we, we did that as a tool for um, outreaching to um, children and families in crisis. That's, wow. what, that's what that book is about. Wow. And I'm sure that was the part of the journey. I mean, I'm sure God gave you that life and he expected you to write that book and put it into perspective. And I'm sure it must help a lot of families who are going through what you experienced and not only the families, but the patient, which you were and which you were writing about. And so that's the part that I, I think is quite important because it's the patient writing about the journey, which you did. So we're going to get more into that. But um, how did your prayers on wings, the, how did you come about making the logo for this organization? Well, so why the duck, right? Everyone wants to know why the duck. And the reason why the duck is because as a cancer patient uh, and being an only child, my best friend, because I was taken out of school, believe it or not, the one thing that brought me comfort at the age of 11 was a little rubber ducky wow. and a little rubber ducky uh you know I, I i i clearly remember back to 1984 first being diagnosed and my mother taking me to uh, to the store to buy whatever we needed uh, thermometer this this and, and whatever we needed and on the shelf was a rubber ducky and i told her i i still remember i told her mom can i have that can i have that and she said, yes, of course, right? right? So that became my best friend. Wow. So, yeah, so that so that ducky, you know, the first years, the company, the first years, that was the rubber ducky, an actual first year's rubber ducky. Mm -hmm. And it squeaked and everything. And, um, <laughs> and it had a special bed and it had a blanket, which was actually a hand towel, but it had a blanket and I would take it everywhere with me. Yeah, wow. you so could even that, take it into the shower with you, right? If it was with the shower, I would sing to it. I would talk to it. It was literally my best friend, but it was a hidden best friend. Right. You know, I, would, I would talk to it in secret and cry right. to it in secret. Yeah. Right. But that's why the logo. Wow, and that is so key, um, especially for young men, young boys. You know, at eleven, they might be like, "Oh, I want to talk to someone, something," but you know, they may think, "Oh, I can't." have a rubber ducky but it is okay guys it's okay as long as you talk to someone something um something even of higher power but you had the duck and that's how it, you know it got you through it and still however old you are till today you still remember that duck and how it was there for you that is so very very 
powerful, right? <laughs> and then the prayers on wings. So the ducks, the, they have wings. So it just makes so much sense now that you look at it. You, there's so much tie-in that you can use, right? Yes, yes, we, we, we do. Um, it, it, it's funny. Uh, so, you know, with the duck, we have, um, uh, we have things that we see on the side, which is uh, ducks flock together, uh, you know, which is, which is what we do as a team and right. as a community, you know, right. and then uh, we, we tackle crisis one feather at a time, mm -hmm. you know, so everything is, every, everything is tied we into the, to the duck, duck right? right to, the, to the ducks. And I mean, it's gotten to the point where I don't eat duck anymore <laughs> oh, wait that that's serious Devin that's yeah, serious that, right that, there they're, they're all my they're all my friends you know the real ones yes wow so. I I love it I never I didn't hear that other one you just said we tackle one feather at a time yeah that yeah. is so cool and that's yeah. exactly when a child is going through a disease and experience you take one step at a time you handle one feather at a time yes so, yes very wow. much so a lot of symbolism there. I love it. So I, I know I have a photo of you. And in this photo, you have an award in your hand. So tell us about what is this, what is this photo about? That photo is the, it's an eight pound trophy <laughs> that is known as the 10 Outstanding Young Americans Award. Wow. So that, that is, um, that is presented by the United States. Um, JC's and how that award came about was the Hawaii JC's they yes. were watching they were watching me since we started our journey with um, POW or prayers on wings and um, it was from a good neighbor column in the midweek that got their attention so from there they were watching us grow and next thing I know I got a call and it was the um, the local, the local uh, award, which was first, which was called the three outstanding young persons. Uh -huh. So, we, so winning that, being one of the three, it, my name gets submitted to the national level. So that award you see me holding is the national level award. So every year, there's ten um, young men or women. It's an under thirty award, or under forty award. Sorry, uh, that is presented um, every year. So 10 awardees per year for 50 states. Yes. There's one out of 50. So, whoa, Devin. Yeah. So, no. So, um, so it was, you know, it was something that was not, I, I didn't, I didn't know there was an award right. <laughs> such, as, such as this. The, the really cool thing, um, the really cool thing, Wendy, is that that award is also um, who is also a recipient of that award is Elvis Presley. Oh my and God. And if you go to Graceland, yes. in his home, wow. there's a room that is dedicated to just that award. The tuxedo he wore, the uh, everything, the award itself is, is um, you get a pin. I think at that time they got a, they got a medal back in that oh. day. And if, wow. you, if you search Elvis Presley, out of all the concerts, all the movies, all the uh -huh. wars that he's been in, that was his, he states it as his most nerve wracking moment in his life To Wow, well, congratulations, Devin, congratulations. Can you just give me the title of that award again? Yes, it's called a Toya, or also known as a 10 Outstanding Young American Award. Oh, wow, congratulations. Job Thank well you. done. So where did this all happen? Where did you receive that award? That award was received in Seattle. In Seattle. And in so Seattle. it was a big whoop de doo because all 10 of you gathered there to receive this award. And I'm sure, was it a surprise or did you go up knowing you won that already? Oh, I, I went up there. I went up there knowing that I won. Okay. Um, um, if there is time, I'd love to share the story of when, <laughs> when it was told to me that I won the award. <clears throat> uh -huh. Um. But, um, but yes, so it was, um, you know, it was a last, it, it was a call during lunch break. I was on my, I was on the state clock. I was on lunch in case my bosses are watching. <laughs> I, was on, I was on lunch. I got a call. It was April 3rd that I got a call that um, I would be 
receiving this award and they were asking me if I could fly to Seattle. Wow. But it was it was very it was very meaningful on April 3rd because April 3rd is the day that I um I became sober from crystal meth. Wow. So it was it, I was already crying and thanking thanking God that I was that he blessed me again. Yes. And then here I got a call from Seattle saying that they want to fly me up for this award because I was chosen. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> wow. You see how it all works? I mean, everything, and you have to, it, 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 you have to be able to see the, the story behind everything we do in life, you know? And so that's the brilliance in you and your life is that things happen. It doesn't just happen that there was a duck on the shelf. There was a reason, and you needed to see the symbolism behind that duck, and you continue using it. And yet the duck also... For kids, for adults, it's 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 a it's a comfort animal. It's a cute. It squeaks. It's loving. It's everything, mm -hmm. right? So yes. and you found every meaning of it, and then also the April third date. I mean, what are the chances, right? That what it would happen on that day that you celebrate your sobriety, your new journey in life, and now you're being honored and rewarded as well to just empower you to continue to do as great as you are. You can't turn back, right? <laughs> yeah, can't you? You got it in your hands. You're going to have right. it in your hands. Eight pounds of glory right there physically in your mm -hmm. hand. So, wow. So, I know the Prayers on Wings, um, I, I'm sure it's not a big organization, but tell me about it. How large is the Prayer on Wings committee? The you know, Prayers on Wings is, um, we, we're, I'd like to say grassroots. Yes. Um, we've worked with, I think the correct question would be, um, who haven't we worked with locally? Um, so everyone that we, the team that knows um, in their head, we've reached out to them somehow, some way. And uh, we've done, whether it's uh, uh, keynote speaking, whether it's workshops, whether it's uh, whatever it's getting into, even community service, uh, we've, we, we've done as much as we could over over the past years. So this uh, organization that we started back in, um, technically we started 2012, but became a 501c3 in 2013. We've we've actually done um, a lot. Um, of course, I had to go back home, and we, I think we've touched every every nonprofit that um, is based out of Kapiolani Women's and Children's Hospital. Um, that was my home back in the day, still mm -hmm. is my home. And right. then from there, we also worked with uh, at-risk teens, uh, Big Brothers, Big Sisters, Honolulu Youth Build. I believe I gave a keynote um, speech at the graduation for the year that we were there. We worked um, work with Habilitat. That is that is actually my family. Um, so we do, I do I do talks over there. Also, the of course we do music over there as well when we have the opportunity. But there, there's so many organizations that we worked with. Make a Wish. I mean, it's it's been it's been amazing. And of course, the the amazing Hawaii JCs who actually mm -hmm. took Prayers on Wings to that next level. Wow, so, they sure did because they gave you that eight pound honor. So <laughs> you know, and not just right. statewide; it was nationwide. And so that sure power lifted you to another another level. But just real quick, what are just let's name me some of the projects that you uh that you are created you have created. Well, we of course we do our um, communication project. Mm -hmm. That is that is our main goal because that is our um, that is our mission statement: building bridges of communication. So constantly to find projects that will uh, have the child and family um, bond together constantly right. working to um, to have that and also so that the child does not feel alone more mm -hmm. important uh, we've done um, other projects expanded in in prayers on wings where we did the duckling giving pro um, giving projects to where the child can pick um, a charity of their choice oh. where, they, where they can become young entrepreneurs yes. and develop a mission statement of why they have chosen a certain charity and do their own outreach and we're just there to support them yes mentor so them and become, yeah, so you're mentoring them 
Right, so yeah. they can become big humanitarians themselves, yes. right? Yes, because they have and, a journey and a story. They need to be the voice yes. as well and yes. the dynamics behind, just like what you had, what you experienced, right? Yes. So, Devin, I know that you are very passionate about Pairs on Wings. From the beginning of our friendship, you spoke to me about all this, and I loved it. But I often see you around town at great events performing or emceeing. So that's why now I get the story. The last time I saw you the other night, you were at the JC's banquet. And that's yes. the tie-in of why you were there, not just an entertainer or an MC, but because of the commitment to that organization of what they did with you, for you, and what you give back to them. So I get it now. Okay. <laughs> so I know that I'll be able to see you at more of their events because I often support, especially the Chinese JC's. But con congratulations for continuing to keep that commitment to that organization. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. And so I know with your passion for prayers on wings, for the passion of music, um, please share with us, how do you make both of that work together to benefit so many? You know, um, over the years of doing music, because Hawaii is so aloha, so tight, uh, and um, you know, we always come together for whatever reason, even just to have lunch, right? <laughs> so what, you throw music in there. Uh, that's another, that's another thing. Right. And if, you know, when you think about, um, when, when you think about uh, all the struggles that we, um, we have in Hawaii, just living on an island, uh, there's so many, there's so much need for, for fundraisers and, um, more so the importance of what we're fundraising for. So um, music has come into play with Prayers and Wings also where we actually started the Prayers and Wings Jam Band mm -hmm. to where it's comprised of uh, 120 plus musicians uh, to where if there is ever a need for music or entertainment that we have a roster that we can uh... put together a band in case the band that you wanted a book, uh, can't make it. But if we can get the singer from the band that yes. you originally wanted to book for your fundraiser, we can get a bass player, we can get this, we can get that, and we can still make that fundraiser a success. Wow. So that's where the Prison Wings Jam Band um, was, was, was created. That's and you're talking genius. big names, Wendy, you know, yes, like I've Macau seen, Star, I've seen. You know, and, and all of that, uh, you know, Hapa, and <laughs> I mean, it's, it, it's, it's crazy, but. Right. It's a joint venture for a great cause or great causes. So, and we, you know, that's, that's genius. That's totally genius. Yeah. So the, the, I love that's, it. That's been a fun ride. That's been a fun ride. You yes. know, as all these bands get together and, you know, every nonprofit, has some kind of barbecue or has some kind of picnic and right. uh, they get the families together uh, we just we just call the bands and Excellent. and we just supply the electric i got a sound man that will come and then next thing you know you got a full functioning excellent happy, excellent happy fundraiser you right. know so, yeah. and you know what it bonds all of you musician musicians as well it's not just Devin and, and company playing at every one of these events but you're giving them the opportunity to do that as well but some, like you said, maybe they may not have all the components that can come out. So that is a genius concept. And you know, you're talking about fundraiser queen, queen right here because I sit on twelve nonprofits. Uh -huh. And yes, <laughs> we do a lot of. We need a lot of you and uh, entertainment just to make that that uh, our audience feel just more at ease and, and welcomed. But um, what is your vision? I really want to get onto this. What is your vision for prayers on wings? Well, you know there. We, after going through back and forth so many just narrowing things down uh we we really narrowed it down to uh, no child should feel alone um that that is really when you think of the word alone um, that would best describe uh, everything that uh, i i felt uh as a as a cancer patient receiving mm -hmm. chemo for four and a half years, as a 10 year um, drug addict, right after receiving chemo, mm -hmm. it was always alone. And the child in me, no matter what age I became or what, how old I ever got, that alone 
had never left. And surviving cancer was enough. Surviving drugs was even more than enough. And I was so blessed to just be able to live through one day, but I got to live how many years after? Right. And and um, that alone, it was another miracle that I never took my own life because I was suicidal. Right. And not a, and I'm not a lot of kids <clears throat> will get will will be that blessed. Right. And so that's where that outreach of why we go into the hospitals, why we go and talk to the families together. Um, mm -hmm so that they can bond um, because right. this this was once upon a time that and um, so we go in there with no walls with no reservations um, and we share when the, and we share humbly uh, that maybe maybe that someone might be feeling this way and you know just that word alone is it just is such a sad word and even even not going through any kind of health issue or addiction alone, even for an, anyone, it's a bad word. It's a hard word. But alone and going through an, an ailment or a disease or an issue, it, it is. I mean, I could understand totally where suicide would be the next word to alone, right? Because there's yes. no one and you're alone. There's no one to turn to. So the fact that you're going in to not just talk to the parents about helping the child or the patient during that moment when they're alone. See, when they're with, when they're together, the child could be anything. But once the parent leaves the room, you would know, Devin, you would know. And the child knows how alone, alone feels. And it's yes. not, it's dark. It's not a good place. Yes, that's, that's absolutely correct. Um, there were so many moments. My mom worked so hard to become, literally, she was, she became the best nurse with just one patient and uh, we had all the medication up and I don't know how many times I would go in a room and I would pour all my medication in my hand and uh, walk out and um, just wanting to just take everything and not wake up the next day. Mm. And before doing that, um, I would look at my mom, my dad sleeping. I, I, I couldn't do it. Mm -hmm. I couldn't do it because I knew how hard they worked that day, that day. And the day before and the day before just mm -hmm. to keep me alive yeah and um i had to put it back very quietly but there were mm -hmm. so many times that i just wanted to end it <clears throat> mm -hmm. but of course i didn't <clears throat> i could totally see that and you know you had a journey uh, a mission to accomplish but and you found that mission i mean truly with the duck being placed into your world but imagine all the children and all the, the, the patients that don't have or they couldn't see the mission and they just give it up. So that's why somebody like you going through it and being able to communicate this with the parents and, and reaching their hearts to tell them that this is real and you experienced it so that they have a, a better education and understanding and approach to guide their child through these darkness, these, this, these, these dark times. But it's truly dark. I can understand. Yeah. So I know that you offer workshops for families in crisis. Can you tell us a little bit about these workshops? Yeah, you know, <clears throat> this is, um, you know, we started out with paint your own ducks projects mm -hmm. where families would paint ducks for each other. The ducks would symbolize uh, a promise that they would exchange the ducks after painting it and they would place it somewhere in their house where they would always go to whether it be in the kitchen or by their toothbrush somewhere that they will always go and that duck would bring them will bring them back to the day that they painted it more importantly the promise that they made that they will always have open communication that um, they will never be busy in the day to say I love you never busy in the day to ask how was your day in return the child will always know that they can rely on mom and dad and talk to them and not a rubber duck, mm -hmm. but their parents. And if not their parents, their teachers. If not their teachers, then their auntie, their brother, their sister, just not alone. Mm -hmm. That was the first workshop we, we, we put together. Because the duck became, um, the painting project became a little distractive, we, um, we launched the, the book, 
turned it into a coloring book where everybody started coloring. But more importantly, reading the story uh, to the families of how important communication is. So how does one get those books uh, at this point? I mean, like, like if I know someone going through this, how do we, do we refer them to your website? Unfortunately, we just lost our executive director and everything. She, she did everything. And she, yes. she was really the heart yes. of Prayers and Wings. Um, but Charlene has passed and these books, what she was in the middle of turning it into a local um, publication because it was nationally published. Uh, we got it back and um, there, to answer your question, there really is no way to get the book. I believe you can do the free download if you look it up um, on, on, online. It's free for download. But um, the best thing is my schedule will be free for any one organization that ever wants to hear the book. I can, I, I can, I will be happy to read it to them in person. <laughs> so, but until we figure that part out, Wendy, I've, um, of okay. course, I will let you know. All right. Well, I'm hoping then whoever can or is hearing your voice and hearing the need and they have those skills, it will give them a purpose to partner with you and put that together and have even maybe a second edition or even update it so that it can be used because as it's so critical, especially in these times where these children are suffering and alone and it should not be. And it's the parents, like you said, your mom, she works so hard, they work so hard and just trying to survive and with the medical bills and just putting food on. I, I mean, you were a single child, but they, some pa families have more than one. So they're needing help and they need the voice and the story and the love and the compassion that you have in that book to share with them so that they can get through the, these times. So let, let us help you to see if there's someone out there that can take over and continue where Charlene left off and um, get, get more heart back into the prayers on wings. All right, Devin. Yeah. And let this, I will let take. This I will be. take you up on that. <laughs> okay, so we're gonna try our best, and I, as I said, we'll post it, and we'll look. We're on the look for that. So anybody that can help and has those skills, please, 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 just let us know. And um, Devin is going to receive your call, and he'll come and read the book to you, and then you guys figure it out. All right. Thank you. <laughs> so Devin, for now, we've run out of time, and I knew we would. But I just want to say mahalo to you, Devin Akasone of Prayers on Wings, an organization that is so needed to assist our kiki as they heal and better their communication skills. I'm Wendy Lowe, and we'll see you back here in two weeks with another edition of Taking Your Health Back. Aloha and mahalo, Devin Akasone. Thank you so much, Wendy. Thank you.